Okay, let's talk. What do you want to talk about? I'm winded from a very small walk. <laughs> That's nice. I don't even want to look at my hair. Listen, um, I'm 52 years old, and I've really started giving up, like, in a big way. And, <laughs> like, look at the, no, like, I bought a nice shirt. But it's untucked. Like, that's where I am in life. Like, I was like, I could... Ugh, no. Um, like, tucking my shirt in has become a, a challenge, like a thing. Anyway, thank you, one lady. <sighs> I'm going to start sweating. Um, not because you're making me nervous, but because I'm in menopause and I will fucking sweat and lick all of you. That's my new thing now, is to just, I'm like, I'll fucking cough on this. I'm sweating and CBM and like blinking sweat out of my eyes, trying not to freak out on people. And, I'm like, and yesterday, for the first time, I heard that little evil voice from when I'm hormonal. I heard it say like, lick him. <laughs> cough on him, cough on him. You don't have my medication. <laughs> you don't think it's funny? I don't like every song you play. <laughs> That's what makes the world go round red. Who the fuck did this? Men. One of these guys came in here and just fucked with it like they do my whole life. Here's what's happening. I am not married. I'm, I've never been married. I'm what men in Texas call a handful. Um... <laughs> I'm all right with that. I, I really am. Yeah. What, what, what's the alternative? Easy going? <laughs> I'll never be that. Uh, listen, you want to talk about female empowerment for a minute? Um, you do not know female empowerment until... So here's what happened. Years ago, I was dating this guy, and he hung up on me. He lived in Virginia Beach. I live here. And he hung the phone up and, you know, turned it off. And I flew there. <laughs> Oh, I had seven hours and $900. Go fuck yourself. You don't hang up on me. <laughs> you don't know female empowerment. You are just little grasshoppers. You don't even know female empowerment until a man opens the door and goes, what? just <laughs> the sight of you. Make... <laughs> That's right, bitch. I'm here. So I, I declared celibacy like a year ago, and then when the and, and where and you know I, I turned a few away, and that was a year ago. I mean, no, almost two years ago. And then after that, it was just like nobody was looking, and I wasn't hunting, so like nothing. It's just been radio silence for another half a year, right? But I'm good. It was like I could either put sex back or I could have donuts, and I was like donuts. Um, so. Yesterday, true story, I'm sitting in the dog park, and this guy comes in, and here's the thing. I realize now, I'm at 52, like if I'm, if the celibacy did one thing for me. It cleared me up and made me realize, because I've always dated guys much younger, like 20 years younger. Yeah, I like, I like men without opinions. I don't like a lot of fucking <laughs> ideas, and you date someone your age and you come home and they're like, I thought we'd have Chinese. And you're like, oh, that's great because I have a fucking pizza. So that's what happens when you start thinking. So you date younger guys, you just throw some nuggets at them and give them, you know, pay-per-view or whatever the fuck they want. And they're just like, oh, thanks, this is great. Um, so I'm in the dog park yesterday and this guy comes in and he takes his, he's age-appropriate. You know, he's old, he like, looks like he's my age. And he takes a no wedding ring. I look for that first, because I'm a sister. I don't take nobody's bought shit. So he takes his jacket off, and I see he's got a little paunch, but he's very good looking, very nice outfit, and a little fucking wiry, weird dog, but whatever. <laughs> and I see the paunch, and I'm like, bitch, you know you're not what you used to be. Like, you have to accept that. That's fine. I'd rather a guy with a little paunch 
And at least it says to me he eats like a meal sometimes and he's not like some fucking older weird guy that's like, I really need that washboard still at 50. Like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and he even had hair. That was great because I was already convinced myself I'm going to have to just touch the sides and pretend this is there. <laughs> so... Which is fine, just like if we, we'll turn the lights out, he can just go above waist and pretend all the drama that's taking place down here isn't happening. So, oh, are you kidding? I've had like two surgeries this year alone, like old man stuff, like hernias and gallbladders. And so there's all these scars, like, no, just stay right here. Like just, and uh, so, you know, he's talking and, and he, uh, he says, oh, he starts to talk, he goes, what kind of dog do you have? And I can't do it, but it's an Australian accent. And I'm like, oh, God, old is getting cute. Like, this is not bad. And, but I'm, I'm not even conscious of how I'm feeling until I say to him, your dog's really cute. And I was like, who the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> where did this come from? Then I stand up and I start picking up poop. That is not my dog's. <laughs> So they, there's some philanthropic me coming, like, oh. And he goes, oh, that's nice of you. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's everybody's park. And I'm like, who is this? <laughs> who is she? Who is this fucking? And, and I'm picking up, and picked up one poo that I'm pretty sure was human. And <laughs> as I'm throwing human poo away, I'm saying to myself, what voice is this? And then I'm like, oh my God, this is flirty Lynn. She's the worst. I thought I, I thought we locked her up. I thought angry Lynn and fucking bitter Lynn and sweaty Lynn all had her locked in a closet. But there she is. Well, maybe we'll see you tomorrow. And I did that. I was like... She's fucking back. Um, this was fun. I am going home. I live a block away. I live on uh, Sullivan Street. In Sullivan, yeah. <laughs> That's where I live. Apartment 3B. I don't care. There's not, I don't care. Really? Back it up. 3B. There's nothing anyone can do I'm not prepared for. I'm not, I'm scared. I've lived here like 24 years in that apartment. 25 in New York. There's nothing anyone can do. You can't rape me. I'll kiss you on the mouth. You think I don't have a rape plan? Are you kidding? That's the worst predator on the planet, next to a pedophile or a polar bear, and I have plans for them too. You know what, fuck a rapist. I just hate rape, how dare you? You crawl in my window, you were crawling out half the rapist you were when you crawled in. I'll rape you. I'll rape your stupid rape. What do you think of that? I don't work during the day, I've had nothing but time to think how will I turn the tables on a rapist. The minute I hear the window open, I'm like, game on. <laughs> I watch a lot of SVU. I will mouth kiss him. I will whisper, I love you. I love you. Look in his eyes through the mask and shit. I love you. <laughs> I'll hold him. I'll hold a rapist. I will hold a strange, think about a stranger rapist. I'm prepared to hold <laughs> And yes, he's gonna struggle. Of course he's gonna struggle. He's never been the inside spoon. He's never been the, the baby spoon with love wrapped around like, shh, shh, you're not going anywhere. Shh. You came to me, didn't you? Yes, you did. You should have noticed the window was open. You should have seen the cheese plate I left out. You didn't even notice it. So busy. And then I, this is how I break him. I put little baby kisses on his rapey hands like this. I do it soft like that so he can feel the tenderness through the glass. Like, I'm your girlfriend now. I'm not sure that that would scare a rapist, but it scares regular people real well. Thank you.